can loving relationships be just as rewarding when there is no intimacy? Certainly Ulrika does not think so. While advertising executive Brian Monet is a doting dad to their son Malcolm and a caring stepfather to Ulrika's other three children, her no-sex marriage made her feel rejected and that an important part of her life was over. But other couples, and indeed singletons, do not believe that sex matters that much and actually see all sorts of benefits to the platonic lifestyle. So just because the passion has gone, should that necessarily spell the end? Joining us now uh, is a lady who hasn't had sex with her husband for 11 years. Uh, that's Sarah Collins. Uh, hello, Sarah. Hello, thank you for having me on Good the show. Good afternoon. Well, thank you for coming on the show. I really appreciate now, it. I, I assume, Sarah, that you do feel uh, that sex uh, is not crucial to a loving relationship. Absolutely not. Um, my husband and I, we've been together 26 years and we are very happily married. We are very affectionate towards each other. Uh, we are intimate, but we just have chosen not to have sex. Did that, um, out of interest, happen after children? Yes, I had my, um, I had three children. After the third one came along, I had a, an emergency crash caesarean and we both nearly died. Mm. And I think that did have an impact on, on my sex drive after we had him. Yes, definitely. Mm. And, cause, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm now incredibly sympathetic to, to this situation because my missus has gone through a horrendous IVF, a very difficult pregnancy, a caesarean, emergency caesarean, and now everything thankfully is OK. But I, I, when I look into the future, I, the idea of us not being intimate sexually ever again, I mean, that, that, would, that doesn't look like the rainbow with a pot of gold uh, at the end of it for me. That would, that would look like a grey and hazy vision of the future and not something that sure. necessarily I'd want to aim for. For me, it's, um, and my husband, I mean, I, obviously I can't speak for him, but from my point of view, sex is not the most important part in our relationship. No. We are, ab above all else, we are the best of friends. He's my rock. He adores me. I adore him. We've got three beautiful children together. Um, and sex is not such an important part of our relationship. We'd much rather hold hands, do you, talk. Do you, so do you miss it at all? Um, personally, no. I know my husband does, but I don't at all. Sorry, uh, can I, on that uh, tack, I've read that you, you're, you said to your husband that if he really wanted sex, he could go to a sex worker. Can I ask you yeah. two questions that you might find a bit intrusive? Uh, why did you say that and did he take you up on it? So I said that because just because that's how I feel about sex mm. doesn't mean he should feel the same mm -hmm. way. Um, and I don't own him as a person. No, no, mm -hmm. um, and if for him it was that important to have sex and I appreciate for a lot of men and women that it is yep. if I wasn't prepared to in inverted commas give that to him um, then I was more than happy for him to go elsewhere as far as I'm aware no he hasn't taken me up on that if he did would would you in all honesty not feel a, even a tinge of jealousy I don't know whether I'd feel jealousy I might feel a bit um, I'm not really sure how to put it. I, I, I know I wouldn't feel jealous because I know it would be a service that yeah. was being provided for him. Um, in my mind, it's no different to going to the dentist or the doctors or see a psychologist or something mm. else. It's a service that, that he's being given. Um, I might feel a bit uncomfortable, but I don't think jealous. Is Gosh, the you're word. an extraordinary lady, Sarah. So, how about so? So, I, I, I Tra Tracy Cox, the the sex therapist. You might see her name turn up in the in the Daily Mail mm. or whatever. She's a a good friend of mine, and I, I don't want to put words into her mouth, but I'm sure if she was here now, she would say, Sarah, I I can help you. Uh, that you don't have to go through the rest of your life not being intimate with your husband. Um, that. You've gone through a trauma, uh, you've come to terms with it, you've found a pattern of life that works for you, but mm. in settling for that, you're denying yourself the earthly pleasures that come from our earthly bodies. And with, do you not feel that any desire at all to perhaps seek help to return you, Sarah Collins, to the woman you used to be? 
Well, I'm coming up 50, so I think age and the menopause yeah, plays right. quite a big part in that as well. Um, you know, you, who's to say in 10 Absolutely. years I'm, I don't go back yeah. to being some some rabid animal that wants to... <laughs> <laughs> I, th- I think you your know. honesty, Sarah, is really Incredible. wonderful. Incredible. And actually Thank the relationship you. you have with your husband, is, I just respect it so much, the fact you've had these honest conversations. And I yeah. think you're right. I mean, I think there are women I've spoken to going through the menopause, they say they'd rather have a sandwich. And some of Can them... Can I just say for men, we're not all <laughs> ravenous, rampant oh, no. bunnies either. And I either. also know a lot of people in relationships, and it's the men who've slightly, what they yeah. would say, lost their mojo. And, and that's yeah. fine too. And I think as long as we all talk, the only problem is when two people feel completely differently and can't reconcile. Could, yes. I, could I ask, Sarah, do you, um, I don't know how to enunciate this correctly on the radio, uh, does one seek pleasure on one's own? Uh, no. No. I, no it, sex He at does, all. but right. I don't. Gosh. I think that's Would you like to speak to my husband? Yes, please. Yes, yes, please. Sorry. Why not? If he's not busy. (laughs) No, I'm not that I'm aware of. It's Graham, right? It's Graham. It's Graham. That's right, yeah. Yeah. I'll just see if he's happy to talk. Okay, thank you. Thank you. No worries. Uh, We'll we'll carry on without you if you want. What an extraordinary forthright and open And I think these kind of discussions are so important. I suspect there are so many marriages where it's it's sort of an unsaid thing or they, they speak to friends and feel they can't admit that they're even in separate bedrooms and I'm, I'm, if i'm spe- speaking personally i just can't i mean I, I don't want to be too open because i haven't mm. checked this with mrs Wright, and that would be unfair but i'm amazed at how quickly the time has gone by and yeah. you sort of sit there thinking, oh, it has been a while oh, when you've actually, got a small child life is yeah. life is, is not uh, it's not impinged on my life at all the only it? thing i'd say is i think you've got to be careful that you don't get so out of the habit that it there becomes an alien concept um i believe graham is on the line are you there graham yes i'll just i'll just pass you over to him one second thank you so much sorry Hello. Hello, Graham. Good afternoon to you, Graham. Um, well, first of all, uh, thank you for coming on the line. Uh, your, your wife is quite an extraordinary uh, woman, been most uh, forthright and, uh, and open. Mm. It would be nice to hear your thoughts on, on your relationship and, and the absence of intimacy. OK, yeah. Well, I didn't hear what she said, so... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that you have a, a loving, fulfilling relationship, that uh, you've not been intimate together for... or not had sex together for, for 11 years, um, that she doesn't really want to have sex and she's sort of happy for you, I guess. I don't want to paraphrase, but kind of happy for you if you felt that you wanted to go elsewhere. Um, you might be... A, you know, you might go elsewhere. Yeah, well, I mean, we're classed as an open relationship, so um, we don't own each other. Yes. So, um, you know, in that respect, that is obviously something that is potentially there. Do, yeah. you, do you miss being intimate in, with your wife? Because it's a different thing, isn't it? From... <laughs> right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Because um, I, I, I was I was saying to Sarah that um, I you know I, I know uh, the sex and relationships therapist uh, Tracy Cox and and I just suggested to Sarah because I I know it's it's her choice she, she, and your choice but one would have thought that you know with three children there was you know we that this the, the absence of sexual desire I'm pretty sure Tracy Cox would say you know that's something that's missing uh, from from Sarah's life and that with some help she might be able to to get it back. Well, if she wanted to, exactly. I mean. It's um, it's not something that we look at and go, well, God, there must be something wrong with us. No. Sa- Sarah, uh, I mean, Graham is... We are as we are sort of thing. And it's not everyone's first... I mean, we we don't conform at all, really, in any respect. Excellent. So, uh, so, Gra- Graham, Sa- Sarah is clearly very happy with the situation. Uh, it, it, for you, is it something that you're happy with or something that you've had to come to terms with? Um kind of you come to terms with it but it then opens up the doors when you realize you're then in an open relationship then it it means it it doesn't show it actually expands your possibilities and mm. you know I think what would if you've got that loving side to your nature then it means you feel like you're not obliged just to be owned and only one person can receive your like the old, like the old Athena poster. If you love someone, set them free. free. Uh, they love it's you, they'll not come about back to you. Free. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not about setting them free. It's about being just more loving to more people. I mean, it's surely mm. that's a better society to be in, where you don't just say, "Well, I can't love anyone else because I've said I love this person." Yeah. Love is something that is a caring, kind thing that you should be encouraged 
mm. amongst other people, not <laughs> be shut off and told, no, you can't do that. Because so why, why, do you, love this person. why do you think we live in such a, uh, a monogamous culture then, or at least where monogamy is encouraged? I think many fall, um, fall by the wayside in the pursuit of uh, monogamy. <laughs> Well, exactly. I mean, that's the thing. It's it's not something that people find easy to achieve. I think it comes down to marriage being such, a, such an old institution. Yeah, exactly. It's a religious institution. It's not really a... You, you look at the animal kingdom, most of the animals don't no. stick to one partner. But some do. But some do, yeah. And, and we're in the middle, the, aren't we? We don't know what we are. No, and that's it. We're told who we are. Mm. That's the problem. Yeah. By, you know, church and religion and other kind of powers that be will tell you what you should be living like. Would that would that extend? Most don't think outside of it. Would that extend, Graham, to let's say if you fell in love with somebody else, that you could uh, have uh, somebody else sharing a home with you and Sarah? Um, we've got a tiny house. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> and they'd have to deal with your three kids. <laughs> I, mean, I already sleep in the smallest room in the house as it is. I don't think I can get much smaller. Actually, that's a really, really good point uh, from, from Gemma. Uh, is, is Sarah still there, Graham? Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm going to bid you goodbye, if I may, Graham, and have a okay. last word with Sarah. Thank you. No problem. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Thanks, thanks so much, Graham. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Hi, Sarah. Hi. Hi. Um, yeah, fantastic couple. I love Graham. He's so passionate about not conforming. And I thought oh, we've, I we, we've got to lure him onto as a regular talk radio <laughs> listener. But but Gemma Forte just said something. That it just made me think about the children, three children. I, I don't know how old they are, but if they are old enough, are, are they aware of, of, of the lack of sex between mum and dad? And does it bother them? Well, my daughter is 19. OK. Um, so she's at that uh, exploratory sex age where right. you know she's she's uh, got her boyfriend and and he sleeps over right. um, and she's very very aware that mummy and daddy sleep apart and have done for the last ten years that we don't have a sex life and for her that's perfectly acceptable because we brought them up to understand that each person is individual um, they have their own independent thoughts. And, and opinions on on what happens in their life, so she respects that. The boys, they are one's coming up fifteen and the other is eleven. Oh dear! Um, <laughs> exactly, we're coming up to a difficult age with the middle one. Yes. But again, because it's never been a taboo subject, we talk about it very openly. Um, they know that we've done magazine and newspaper articles. Yep. I've been on the TV yep. talking about it, and they are totally au fait with that they they get that that's their mum and dad we're a bit quirky we're a bit weird they <laughs> you're a bit wonderful <laughs> uh, yes i think i think you're a bit wonderful too uh so I've, oh, I've got lovely. i've got to leave it there but uh, uh from here uh, all three of us i think yep. in, in the studio yep. and, and by the sights of it those uh twiddling the, their knobs uh, in private on the other side of the glass wall thank you thank you for giving up your time a you really really Any interesting chat all. bless you uh, and good luck to the future as well not just to you and graham but the kids as well 